My name's Chelsea and I'm a cheap holiday expert and recently I completed a six nights for £600 road trip and that included everything around the ring road of Iceland and proved that Iceland does not need to be super pricey. So what I'm gonna do right now is muster up all those cheap tips for you and try and get through as many as I can in five minutes. If you're new around here, please do hit subscribe for more cheap tips, tricks, and travel vlogs, including the entire Iceland series. But we should crack on. Let's get five minutes on that timer. Let's go. We're gonna start with things you should do before you get to Iceland. When booking your flights, go to Google Flights to find the cheapest dates. And look here, you can toggle between how many days you want for your trip. The cheapest dates will come up in green. If you want to go away over a weekend, you need to leave the destination blank, then you need to click on flexible dates, then on weekend, go back to the map, zoom in on Iceland, and it will show you the cheapest dates across a weekend. Once you've found your dates, before you go ahead and pay, always go back to Skyscanner, because nine times out of 10, they will show you a cheaper price than what you find on Google Flights. If you need a hire car, then use a comparison site. I normally use Skyscanner, but I realized it wasn't pulling in local firms too. Therefore, I found an Icelandic broker called Northbound, and they were consistently cheaper. Get a card that lets you spend for free abroad we use Monzo, but I can also recommend Starling Bank, We Swap. There's plenty of choices out there and we never struggle to pay on card whilst in Iceland. Make a meal plan and then a shopping list and make sure you stick to it. I will put my meal plan in a link down below for you. Book a check-in bag. I know it's an initial hit of money, but seriously, what you are going to be able to pack into that bag will save you a lot of money in the long run. If you're traveling with someone else, you could share it. Now that you've got that extra space, go around your kitchen before you leave and pack a box full of the basics. I'm talking cutlery, napkins, sachets of things, smaller Tupperware boxes so that when you cook stuff, you can take it out with you for the day. Also use mini cosmetic pots for things like salt, pepper, spices, washing up liquid, oil. This will save you so much money because you won't be having to buy them in full. Take a thermos flask with you. If it's cold, you are going to be wanting some hot drinks to warm you up and they could cost you four pounds a pop several times a day. Do it. On to booking accommodation. When deciding on a hotel versus a guest house, always go for the guest house. The hotels in Iceland are pretty minimalistic anyway, so you're not really going to be losing that much on style. Whilst they may be more basic, they have great facilities, including a kitchen. Make sure you book a guest house with the kitchen, you will save so much money by being able to cook your own meals. Most of them do have them, but make sure you check. Don't forget Airbnb. We stayed in the cutest little cabin in the middle of nowhere for 75 pounds a night, and it was awesome. There's a lot of guest houses on Airbnb too, but my tip would be always Google them independently because you can normally get them cheaper booking them direct rather than through a third party. Try house swapping. We stayed in the most ridiculous luxury cabin for two nights thanks to a website called Love Home Swap. We didn't actually have to swap our house of anyone. It's a bit too complicated for me to whiz through it now. Just go and watch that video and you will find out how we managed to stay for 27 pounds a night each. Struggling to find availability for your dates? Why not flip your road trip on its head and go the other way around? Most people go anti-clockwise, but there's nothing stopping you from doing it clockwise. Before we get to the holiday, there's one thing you should do before you get to Iceland, and that is buy alcohol from Duty Free. Iceland is not part of the EU, so you should get the cheapest price possible at the airport, and it is a hell of a lot cheaper than trying to buy it and even track it down in Iceland. Do not buy mixers, you can still get them at supermarkets. Finally, moving on to actually arriving in Iceland. When you collect your car hire, make sure you ask if they're part of any loyalty scheme. We realized on our keys that we had this sticker, which meant that we got money off every single fill up and we got a free coffee. If you are a Costco member, make sure you take your card because there is one in Reykjavik just 15 minutes outside and it is easily the cheapest place that you are going to get petrol on the entire island. If you don't have membership, don't worry, there's another petrol station just up the road, which is the second cheapest. If you're parking at a tourist attraction, look for people who are just leaving as their parking ticket may still be valid. You can just take it off them and put it on your own thing. And remember, always pass on your ticket because then the gods of karma will be on your side. When shopping, the cheapest supermarket is bonus. However, Cronin and Netto were also pretty well priced too. If your flight is getting in in the late afternoon in the evening, you will probably find that you can't find a bonus open. Go and shop at Netto or Cronin instead. You will save more money by doing that 
then going out for dinner and waiting the next day to go to bonus. I cover all the current prices in bonus and in netto in my videos, which I will link down below too. This is a controversial one, but if you're wanting to save money, do not go to the Blue Lagoon. There are so many other geothermal pools that are cheaper or even free. And remember, wherever you go, to take your own towel with you because some of the places charge you for that. And lastly, it is possible to go out drinking. Your best bets are in Reykjavik or Akureyri, which is the second biggest city in Iceland. They have happy hours happening across all different bars at different times. In fact, in Akureyri, you can go from 4 till 10 p.m. and the beer's all under five pound or less. Stop the timer. We did it. It's over. They are all the cheap tips you are getting. If you have any more tips for your fellow humans, then please do leave a comment below. That would be so helpful. If you found this helpful, then please do give it a like, leave me a comment and click subscribe if you're not already. Ooh, and, and do that on the little bell there. Yeah, and you'll get notifications when I post next. If you are planning to do your own Icelandic road trip, then do check out the entire Iceland series where me and the housemate James managed to do six nights for £600 all in. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video here on How Many Holidays. Bye!